Hey everyone, and welcome back to the next Python tutorial. In this one, we're going to build a uh, number guessing game. Um, and in doing that, we're going to learn how to get input from the user. Uh, so I'm going to make a new file here. So this will be our first kind of like full, fully made little teeny project that uh, you can make and have fun with. It's super basic, but it does teach you kind of like the structure of how a typical programs made. Um, for like a real basic program. Uh, so first thing I'm gonna show you is how to get input from the user. So it's really easy. There's a built-in keyword in Python and it looks like that. And it's just called input. And when the interpreter gets here and reads this line of code, it stops and puts a cursor on the screen where a user can type in something and then whatever they type in gets thrown back in place of this input line. Um, by the way, whenever you see a word and it's followed by two parentheses like this, open and close, it's called a function or a method. Um, you can kind of use whichever word you want. There are differences, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Just know this is like a function. It does something. Uh, think of it like a verb. It's an action. So we're using the input function and open and close parentheses means, hey, this input function, run this function, do it. And with this one, just so this is one that's built into Python, and what it does is it stops and waits on user input. So if we do run, uh, let's go ahead and save it as input, save it to the desktop. And as you can see, all it did was it put a cursor here, and it's waiting on input. So we type in the number five. And that's all it did because we didn't tell it to do anything else. Um, now in these parentheses, uh, some functions, uh, you just this is all you type to get it to work, uh, but some functions take what are called parameters. You can pass in, uh, you can pass in arguments to them. Uh, like they'll take certain parameters in order to run. And one of the one of the arguments you can pass in to the input method is like a string. So we can type in like please enter a number. So what this is going to do is when this line of code is run, it's going to print out to the screen the word please enter a number and it's going to put the cursor right next to it and wait on the user to type in something. So it's going to do the same thing it just did, but it's also going to uh, like give the user some dialogue to read. Oh, take out that five. So we're going to run it again. Now, now this time it does the exact same thing, but it actually gives us something to read. So please enter a number five. And that's all we told it to do. So it doesn't do anything else. That's really all you need to do to get input from the user. So now that we know that, we can build our program with everything we've learned so far. So I'm kind of going to do this on the fly here. Uh, so the first thing, what all do we need to make this program? That, uh, essentially, you want to think of what is the program, like what do we want it to do? Well, I want it to, I want the program to pick a number. We'll just say a number 1 through 10 and it'll ask the user to guess the number and if it's uh, not if it's not equal to if their guess is not equal to the number that we've picked in the background it'll just keep asking them to guess the number until they get it right and once they get it right it'll actually say congratulations you've won and that's all it does so the first thing we need to do is uh, pick a number so we'll just call a we'll make a variable called answer and we'll just say 5 so the answer that they need to pick is 5 um, then we want to make another variable, and I'm going to call it is answered, meaning have they guessed correctly. This is the variable that's going to store true or false. Like, have they answered it correctly, or have they not answered it correctly? And since they haven't answered it correctly at the beginning of the program yet, we'll just make it false. And these are really the only two variables we need to build this program for right now. Um, so what the program's going to keep doing we need it to keep looping through like the uh it, it obviously needs to have a loop because we got to keep asking them to guess until they get it right so it makes sense to make a while loop so uh make sure this is the right way to do this or the best way to do this uh while is answered equals false meaning if while they have not answered correctly yet so uh, is answered equals false, meaning they haven't answered it correctly yet. So while they have not answered it correctly yet, even though this is kind of confusing, it says while is answered equal fault equals false. This actually returns true because it's saying while false equals false, 
which is true because they equal each other. So while they haven't answered it correctly, we want to make a variable called guess, and this is what their guess is. So guess is going to equal input, and it's going to say please guess a number from 1 to 10. So this is going to um, it's going to output to the screen, please guess a number from 1 to 10. And whatever they type in is going to get thrown right here, and it's going to get assigned to a variable we've made called guess. Once that's assigned, we can do uh, if an if statement to check if they're true. So if their guess equals the answer, which the answer is 5 because we made the answer 5 up here. So if guess equals answer, then is answer, if they got it correct, now we're going to make is answered equal true. And once is answered equals true, it's going to break out of the while loop because it no long, this is answered no longer equals false. So it's going to be, does true equals false? No. So it's going to break out of the loop. Um, and then once it's broken out of the loop, we're just going to print, congratulations, you have won. And it's the end of the program. So... Let's go back through this one more time. So while they have not answered, uh, while they have not made the correct answer, it's going to get their guess from them, and then it's going to check their guess and see if it equals the answer. If it does equal the answer, it is going to change the is answered variable to true. And I also want to put an else statement here that says, "Hey, if they got it wrong, means if guess if the guess doesn't equal the answer, we're going to print." That is incorrect. Please try again. So it just says, hey, you got it incorrectly, and then it's going to go back to the top, and it's going to do the same thing over and over again until they get it correct. So let's go ahead and run this. So please guess a number from 1 to 10. So we'll put 1. That is incorrect. Please try again. All right, let's try 2. That is incorrect. Please try again. Now let's try this. I'm going to put the correct answer, which we know is 5. That is incorrect. Please try again. Now, why did that happen? Because um, that should be right. So the answer is 5. We entered 5 right here where it says, please guess a number, and it stores it into the guess variable. So if 5 equals 5, then the is answered variable should now be true. And when it goes back through this, it should say, while is answered equals false, which it doesn't anymore, it equals true, so it should never go in here. It should break out and say, congratulations, you've won. Um, so why is this? Technically, this should have worked. Uh, this is an extremely common uh, thing that will get you many, many times. It still gets me to this day, but usually when it happens, I can instantly fix it. And I actually have a friend that just started programming uh, probably like six months ago now, but he has every type. Every time he runs into this issue, he always comes and grabs me and is like, can't figure out what my code's working, and I'm like, oh, this is the problem. The problem is when we're typing in these uh, when we're typing in these values right here, where it says, "Please guess a number from one to 10, and we entered one. It's storing the number one into this guess variable, but it's not actually storing the integer one. It's storing a string that is the character one. So it's storing. You would think it would store the number one like that, but what it's actually doing is storing one like that. And these do not equal each other. These are completely separate types, and the character one on the keyboard that you type in does not equal the value of one, because this is like a word. Uh, they do not equal the same thing. So what this is saying, if the character one equals the answer, well, sorry, actually it would be five. So the character five, so this is saying if the character 5 right here equals the answer, which is the integer 5, which they don't, so it skips assigning is answer to true, so it still thinks it's incorrect. Now the way you fix that, um, where it checks for it right here, um, or actually we'll do it right here. So when, when we type in the number 5 and it gets stored into this guess variable, we, uh, we have the character 5 stored into guess, and we want to convert that to an integer. So on the next line of code, there's a, there's a command or a built-in function inside of Python that can convert strings into integers. So And it's just int. 
you just type in the keyword int and it's and it's a function so it has parentheses and the parameter uh, that it requires is what are you wanting to convert convert into an integer um, so we're wanting to convert guess into an integer uh, and actually let's do it let's do it up here uh, we'll do it right when we right when we uh, create the variable so we'll do trying to think of the best way to do this without really confusing you let's do this let's do integer so this whole thing uh, right where we made input there's input and it's gonna say please guess a number from 1 to 10 and we're typing in the number 5 so this whole thing this input please guess a number from 1 to 10 is getting converted into the number 5 and that number 5 is getting thrown in this integer function and so it's saying, all right, that number five, convert that whole thing into an integer. So now this whole line of code right here represents the integer five and not the character five anymore. So guess now equals the integer five. So if the integer five equals the integer five, which it does, then turn the answer into true. And then now it will break out of the while loop. So let's try and run that now. So we'll try one, says it's incorrect, now let's try five. Congratulations, you've won. So that worked. Um, so I know that was that was probably kind of confusing how I did that, but let's let's just erase all this and I'll kind of show it to you with just that on the screen. So if I have a uh, value called X and I'm just assigning it the string with the character five in it, uh, let's print X and then run it. So it prints five to the screen, but this isn't the integer five, it's the character five. Um, and then after it prints it to the screen, let's do uh, x equals integer x, and then print, well actually here we'll do this. We'll make one called y, and it equals the integer of the character five. And then we'll print y. So x equals the string 5, and y equals the integer 5, because we're throwing the character 5 into this integer function, so it converts it into an integer. And we're printing both of them on the screen. And they're going to look the same, but they're not. So they both show 5. And then we'll do if x equals y, print they are the same. And this shouldn't run because the character 5 does not equal the integer 5. So then we'll run it again. And see how it doesn't print it out. Uh, but if we, if we convert this x right here, if we run this integer function on this x right here, now they should both be integers and it should print they are the same. And it does. It prints they are the same. So that's a real common one. If you're ever getting user input from a user and they type in a number, that value is always a string. So you have to run this integer function on whatever they type in to convert it to an integer. Um, you'll come across that issue so many times that it'll be like a normal thing to do. Uh, you'll just see it so often um, that I know it's kind of confusing right now, but after doing it so much, it, like you'll have, you'll still get that error message or something's not working correctly and you'll instantly know how to fix it. Um, but yeah, that's that project. I'll see you guys in the next video.